You've opened the door to the janitor's domain. A broom closet full of wonders. Beyond the plungers, brooms and unknown items of disgust are memories of the past. The memories you're about to hear are not for the faint of heart. The memories are meant for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Prepare yourself for tales from the janitor. That'll be uh, $10, please. You want me to? <laughs> oh, hey, it's you. Let me dry your car off for you. Actually, can you pull over there? Ah, welcome to the Wolverine State. I know you're probably thinking, what am I doing in a car wash? Well, I was hoping to clean my soul and get some of this blood off of me. <laughs> Don't worry, though. It's not my blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll tell you about it later. Anyways, so, what do you think about Michigan so far? I know it's not the prettiest state in the southern part, but once you get up north, oh, it's like a whole different state. Some interesting facts about Michigan. It houses the vehicle that JFK was shot in. You can look at it. Uh, maybe uh, we need to bring it through the car wash. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, Jimmy Hoffa may or may not be here. <laughs> and, uh, it's the only state that has two peninsulas. It has the most lighthouses of any state. And, believe it or not, has the largest weather vane in the world. Not too shabby if I don't say so myself. I know, I know. You're not here to listen to me talk about useless facts about the home of the big three. Michigan, like many other states, has some uh, unusual stories, shall we say. I guess we could talk about those, like the Red Dwarf. Uh, I mean, if you want. <laughs> All right, this is my type of place. Do you see him yet? Not yet. Are you sure he comes here? Word on the street, my resources know that he frequents this place often. No matter how the race is run, it always ends the same. How is that? Another room without a view waits downtown. Someone could be faster on the draw. No matter where he hides, I'm coming after him. Gentlemen, get your wallets out and put your hands together for Valentino Whisper. Her seduction will linger long after the dance ends. How long have we been after him? Too long. Too long indeed. This place is harsh. He would have to be crazy to come here. At least he is not a mall magnet like the others. At least get better looking women. Really? That one looks like your wife. Holy shit, that does look like my wife. Hey baby. Do you want to go back in the room? I can dance for you. Back off, lady. I'm working here. So am I, sugar. In fact, I'm sure that we could work together. Look, lady, I'm a lame businessman who has no money. I lost it all gambling. So unless you want to work for free, I think you're barking up the wrong tree. I mean, I guess we could. You know, for fun. Really? Psych. No way, Spaz. You know, you would look better with something in your mouth. Oh, yeah? The only thing I want is hard. It can be hard. Huh. Well, I'm talking hard cash, baby. Maybe we can come to an arrangement. Put your dick back in your pants. There's our guy. Who is he with? I don't know. I'll be back, fellas. Never seen him before. Look at that smile, guys. You can barely notice she's not wearing anything else at all. Kind of hard to see who he really is. Just remember, we're just watching him. See where he goes once he leaves here. I know. So long as he doesn't slip us again. He won't. He's going in the back room. But we can't just follow him in there. Hopefully he's a quick finisher. We all can't be like you. Where'd the other guy go? He's over there, throwing money. Must be nice not to be on our pay. I do all right. Yeah, 
Just look at our houses and what we drive. Don't get stuck on material things. I know this is a material world. And I'm a material guy, living in a material world. Not now. A stranger's moving again. Looks like he's going to the back room. Great, so now both our guys are back there. Any back way out? Only way out is through the front. I guess we just have to wait. Hey, Sugar, my boss says that if you ain't buying, you've got to leave. Tell your boss we'll be leaving soon. No. Tell your boss we will leave when we are good and ready to leave. Jack, what the hell? Shut up, Paul. <laughs> Quit trying to ruin my fun. Hun, I don't want no problem here at the Red Dwarf. Well, you got one now, sugar. Jack, what the hell has gotten into you? What? I feel alive. I say we burn this motherfucker. Jack, what the fuck has gotten into you? Nothing, man. This club's got my blood pumping. When you go home and talk to your wife, remember that every woman has that one song that'll turn her into a stripper. You got a problem here? <laughs> yeah, we got a problem. This girl of yours is telling me I gotta leave. I think you better listen to the lady. Eh, uh, well, what if I don't? Jack? You don't want to know. Jack, he's leaving. Just this once. I will listen to you and leave. Come on. Hey, I said I was leaving. Hand off. I'll put my hands where I want them. Get your fucking hands off me. That's it. I'm tired of being nice. Fuck off! Hey! Hey! I said I was going! God! Take your big man! God! Get off me, you fucking ape! God! Get! What the hell? What the hell, man? Get off! You happy now, you freak? Just act drunk. Ah, I got you. Just stay behind them. Make sure they don't get into any vehicle. Doesn't look like there's any vehicles nearby. They look like they're just walking the river. Why does it have to be the river? What's wrong with the river? The Detroit River. I hate this place. Why do you hate it? Is it because of Canada? It doesn't. But it's just a nasty river. All the pollution, the trash, the smell. They started cleaning it up. It'll never be clean. It'll always have the blood and the filth of the city. They stopped. What should we do? Just keep walking. What if he spots us? It'll look even worse if we stop. Just keep your head down. Is that a gun? No, I don't think so. Just keep walking. He's going to see us. We just need to make sure he's not up to no good. And if he is? We stop him. How do you stop a demon? I don't know, but we have to try. You never know when the gales of November come slashing. Come on, let's get out of this freezing rain. Does anyone know where the love of God goes? When the waves turn the minutes to hours. Welcome to my breakdown. I hope I didn't scare you. <laughs> That's just the way we are when we come down. We sweat and laugh and scream here. Because life is just a dream here. You know inside you feel right at home here. <laughs> ah. The Nain Rouge, as it's known in French, or the Red Dwarf, the demon of the strait, has plagued Detroit since the 1700s. It's been said that the demon made himself seen in 1763 before the Battle of Bloody Run, where 58 British soldiers were killed. Then it was seen after the battle dancing with the corpses, and then the river turned red with blood for days afterwards. It was the Nain Rouge that was blamed for the surrender of Detroit to the British in the War of 1812. It was also seen during the Detroit riots in 1967 and was seen before the ice storm of 1976. Oh, it seems like whenever you see this demon, bad things are about to happen. <laughs> uh, to be expected in all honesty now in Detroit, they hold parades annually, hoping to get on the demon's good side. 
Whew. We'll see if this demon soon reveals himself again. <laughs> uh, uh-uh. Let's take a little trip up north, shall we? Come on, Mr. Fisher. Tell us a scary story. Yeah, come on, Mr. Fisher. Hmm. I have one I could tell you. Oh, tell it, Mr. Fisher. Is it scary? It has to be scary. I hope it's really scary. I never said I was going to tell it. Come on. Tell Mr. Fisher. I don't know. It's probably a lame story. Yeah, that's why he doesn't want to tell it. Oh, it's not lame. Come on and tell it already. Joey, go open that box and get the marshmallow. Oh, he is going to tell it. Are you all comfortable? I am. He's stalling. He is old. Maybe it takes a while for him to remember. Hey, I'm not that old. You're older than my dad. By like two or three years. Yeah, but his dad is old. Let the story begin. Everyone get settled. (laughs) (laughs) Are you finished? Sorry. The last known sighting was right here on this campground. What happened? Park rangers were doing their normal rounds, making sure that the campers were all behaving and that their fires were not too big. They were coming to a spot that many campers weren't staying at yet. They heard a commotion in the bushes. What was that? Mr. Fisher, what happened? The rangers go check it out, flashlight shining into the bushes, when all of a sudden they hear this howl. They look at each other, and with a nod, they go into the bushes, slowly walking. They go into the woods, flashlight shining into the woods, wondering what the noise was that they just heard. They go deeper into the woods, and... And... Oh, I don't know if I should tell you the rest. Mr. Fisher, we have to know. Yeah, we have to know. I don't know if you're ready. We're ready. Okay, don't tell me later that I didn't try to warn you. I think he's stalling again. He is definitely stalling. I wonder if he forgot the story. I didn't forget the story. Then just tell us. Where was I? I told you, he forgot. Memories are complicated. We remember what we want to remember and forget what we need to forget. Just tell the story. They go deeper into the woods and look for the source of the noises. They soon come across a carcass that looks fresh. They then see the blood trail and decide to follow it, leading deeper into the woods. They walk and walk shining the flashlights all over when they all of a sudden hear a sound. A sound so hideous and evil that no one can describe. They look at the seven-foot-tall creature, staring into its amber eyes, when all of a sudden... What was that? Was that the creature? Yes, yes, they scream. They scream looking up at the dog man with its canine legs and human torso. Is there a vision? Do you want me to finish the story or not? Is there a vision? Behind you. What is it? Michigan Dogman legend dates back to the Native Americans who once lived on the land. The myth wasn't very well known to the modern world until very late in the 20th century. Sightings have been documented since 1987, but the first known modern sightings can be traced back to 1887 when two lumberjacks saw a creature that had a man's body, but a dog's head. Woof! <laughs> The story has been made into movies, multiple books, a play, and even a song about the creature. The Legend of the Dogman song has a lyric that goes like this. Have the dogman gone away? Have they all disappeared? Soon enough, I guess we'll know, because this is the time to fear. All I know is that it makes you wonder. The tenth year's coming near. (laughs) Ah, 
let's head back a little south now for our next tale at the Saline River. Thank you for taking me to the store. We needed to do it. Yeah, but we could have gone to the store in town. What? And look at dresses through a catalog? <laughs> Not my girl. I didn't think you would do it with your truck, though. We just killed two birds with one trip this way. What do you have in the trailer, anyways? Just a bunch of supplies going to a body shop. I never understood why people can't just fix cars like you do. Well, not everyone was born under a shade tree like me. <laughs> what did trees have to do with your automotive skills? Nothing, honey. Nothing at all. So do you like the dress you got? I do. I'll make everyone jealous at the wedding. I'm sure you'll turn some heads. That's why I'm not wearing it now. I don't need you rubbernecking while driving. <laughs> I knew I got lucky when I met you. I had a flat tire and you were driving by. I don't know if that was you getting lucky or not. We were both lucky. I didn't have a spare, so you took my tire and me into town. We had a cup of coffee while they patched it up. Coffee? That turned into pie? That turned into dinner? That turned into me driving you home? Because we sat in that diner for so long, the tire shop closed and we had to come back in the morning. <laughs> it was a great cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great cup of coffee. It didn't hurt. I was only 19. What does that have to do with it? Nothing. But I sometimes wonder if I was older or different, would you still have stopped? I stop and help everyone I can when I'm on the road. Any young girls? Yeah. But they're never you. <laughs> What's so special about me? You're my wife. I know that. But what is so special about me, then? I feel safe around you. Safe? A big, tough guy like you? Not what I mean. I'm confused. I feel like I can say whatever to you. You get me. After ten years of marriage, I should get you. I can talk to you about anything. I hope you can. You're my husband. I don't think I'm explaining myself correctly. I mean, I can tell you my deepest, darkest secrets. And you don't judge me. You just listen. I love you, Frank. I know. Ah, oh, come on. Not here. Not on the bridge. Let me get this rig over as far as I can. Is this the Saline River? The one and only. I'm going to hop out and see if I can see what's wrong. Just stay in the cab. I see people rowing. <gasps> Honey, we should go rowing. Uh-huh. Do you see anything yet? Hmm. Thought he could talk to me about anything. Honey? Did you find what was wrong? I know you can hear me. Frank? Frank? Frank! Oh my god, Frank! What happened? Frank, can you hear me? Frank, please! Please wake up! Frank! Oh god, no! When the police got to the scene, they found both bodies with all their bones broken. The murder on this bridge in Saline, Michigan was caused by, you guessed it, trolls. <laughs> I know you knew that. Thanks to the urban legend, the bridge was called the Troll Bridge, and soon after, the legend began to spread. In 1973, a group of drunk teenagers set out to blow up the bridge, but when the teens placed the bomb, it didn't blow. Frustrated, one of the kids took the bomb home to fix it, but uh, <laughs> unexpectedly blew up himself and his house. The bridge still stands today. In 1981, a man was found dead under the bridge, which just added to the legend. The original bridge was replaced years ago with a new one, but it eventually has inherited the bad vibes of the original. Standing on the bridge, at night, alone, 
you'll most likely feel a prickling on the back of your neck. So go ahead. <laughs> now that you know the legend, pay a visit to the Troll Bridge some night. Alone, if you've got the guts to enter the dungeon swamp, I should warn you, this final story will get a little <laughs> insane. <laughs> Are you ready? I want to start the movie. Hold on, the popcorn's still popping. Uh, how long does it take to pop some popcorn? Just go ahead and start it. But you'll miss the beginning. Nothing ever exciting happens in the beginning. It's not like anyone is going to die. True. I, oh, okay, it's, um, it's movie time. and gentlemen, this is not your normal documentary. This is about a woman who simply lost her mind. The year was 1921, when a 20-year-old Mita Dungeon married Ronnie Hartle, and not long afterwards, she gave birth to two babies. Hey, honey? The popcorn isn't done yet. Where'd you get this movie from? I got it from Sally. Why? Did you know it was a documentary? What's it about? Fathered through incest by her own brothers, they were taken straight to the barn and clubbed to death and buried. A year later, Mita murdered her father-in-law, David. During the autopsy, it was later discovered that his body contained enough strychnine to kill a dozen men. It's about this woman who, um, had some children. Oh, I like scary movies with children in them. I don't know if this is that type of movie. Popcorn's done. I don't know if I want to keep watching. Come on, sit for a bit. I've got popcorn. Lift the bowl. What? Blanket. Oh, right. So, what did I miss? Not much, really. See, I told you nothing really happens in the beginning. The next part of what I'm going to tell you doesn't get any better. What you are about to watch is a reenactment of what could have happened. What kind of film is this? Quiet, I want to watch this. Oh, now you do. <laughs> Here, have some popcorn. Where is my breakfast? I'm hungry. I'm making it right now. Have some coffee. <laughs> Hurry up. I ain't got all day. Here is your coffee. Did you grab the paper yet? It's on the table, dear. It's hard to see it with these flowers on the table. You're right. It's my fault. I don't know what I was thinking. You're not smart enough to think. All you need to do is cook for me and wash my drawers. Is that all I am? Is a servant to you? You're my wife, and all you need to do is just what I tell you. Your breakfast is ready. What is this? It's creamed potatoes and bacon. I wouldn't feed this to a dog. I'm sorry. What can I make you? I don't want anything but this coffee. Let me refill it for you. Here you go. What's, what's in this coffee? I'm trying something new. This tastes, tastes funny. I think you should go back to the other one. Meta, what would you, you do? Why didn't you just rot in hell, you bitch? Mom! In May of 1922, Mita put strychnine in her husband's coffee, but he was slow in dying, so her mother came in and finished him off with a rolling pin. Mita's brother came to take his body and hang him in the neighbor's barn to make it look like a suicide. The murders and deaths did not stop there. This continued until the late 1920s. There were 
many trials, a lynch mob, numerous confessions, accusations, mistrials, and appeals. Now people witness ghosts and floating apparitions, glowing eyes, strange noises, voices, and nooses in the trees. What happened to cause this woman and this family to act the way they did? There is more to the story that we will never know. I mean, who really needs the truth anyway? What did we just watch? Nothing. Did you enjoy the popcorn? It tasted a little funny. It's a family recipe. A family recipe? <laughs> Julie, how could you? <laughs> A good old family recipe. The twisted tale of ghosts and insanity at the Dungeon Swamp is one of the craziest stories I've ever heard. It has insanity, murder, forgery, incest, and lots of crazy people. <laughs> Cuckoo. <laughs> uh, located near a small town near White Cloud, this story is one that many don't talk about as much as they should. Since this old movie stole all my historical facts about the story, I'll have to leave you with lyrics to one of Bob Seger's songs, one of Michigan's greatest songwriters. I awoke last night to the sound of thunder. How far off I sat and wondered. Started humming a song from 1962. Ain't it funny how the night moves? when you just don't seem to have as much to lose. Strange how the night moves with autumn closing in. Oh, look, cars are backing up. I gotta finish these cars. After I'm done with them all, I'll see you in Duluth. There's a friend I need to meet there. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Hold your horses. Hey, 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 hey. There's no reason to give me the finger. Golly, you can always tell when you're in Detroit. Come, take my hand. We'll dance on graves. Raise the dead. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. Once you pull the trigger, you can't put the bullet back in the gun. There's no telling who will be next. Maybe you? Maybe me? No, not me. <laughs> Don't have to lie to me Don't fill your head with things And think you're free I can smell the fear I think you may clear Yeah I can be rude, be in the mood I can be rotten I can be cool, my like a fool But never forgotten Creeping in the dark Waiting for you You won't like what you see Yeah, I feel like a monster Not the worst kind of me Now I feel like a monster And I just hit a monster I'll become your nightmare Sipping in your dreams I'm the definition of the worst kind of me Now I feel like a monster Bye.
I'm not heated on you. No, I'm just telling you the facts. Oh, these chains can keep me down. Yeah. I can be rude, be in the mood. I can be rotten. I can be cool, man, like a fool, but never forgotten. Keeping in the dark, waiting for you. Sing me, sing me.